My name is Colin um, and I'll be running tonight's session. Um, look, I want to say an enormous thank you to all of you for coming along, um, investing your time and your evening. Um, I know it's so warm and balmy outside, you probably like to be outside having a cold drink or something. Um, so I really do appreciate it away from your family and things. Um, look, tonight's session is going to be focused 95% on one thing. And that one thing is on you. So I really want to know selfishly um, why you've turned up, what it is you'd like to get out of tonight. Um, and so I'm very focused tonight, will be very cent centered on LinkedIn. Um, but really it has a whole lot of purposes and reasons for being used. So some of you might be looking to grow sales in your business. Some of you might be looking for your next role. Some of you might like to um, boost awareness and get more information out in the market. Some of you might be um, looking to grow your profile, like be a bit more of a celebrity or a speaker out there. So there's a whole range of reasons right through from, um, you know, students who are coming through, uh, coming through studying right through to big businesses and government who are looking to get their information and messaging out. So there's a big range of reasons out there. Um, and so I would love to hear a little bit more. Um, and so I would love to know what your primary purpose um, for coming along tonight is, what you'd like to know about. So can I have a bit of a show of hands, like an understanding of who is looking probably for the next role or next kind of career move? So that's good for recruiters in the room. Um, so so who's, looking at, um, who's looking to grow their business, like to get more sales or more runs on the board there? Yep. Fantastic. And who's out there looking to grow awareness or actually just get more knowledge of a, um, of a gr group? Yep, so government or, or another organisation. So can I ask at the back, I'd love to hear, so are you ha have a business or a...? No, no, I'm a teacher Fantastic, in yeah. IT, so it's a part of social media and connections, so I'm Fantastic, great. So yeah, so look, I really encourage you to, um, to be bold. Um, and really make sure you are selfish tonight. And that means um, rip me up with questions, shout out what you're after. If something doesn't make sense, let me know. Um, and a secret is that I've gone and stalked every one of you. Um, so I've gone and had a look at all of your profiles. I've looked at your businesses um, and gone and had a look at your presences. So I have a little bit of understanding of why you might be here. What, I didn't come to your house if you, I just, I just, a few people looked worried. <laughs> so, is that guy been? Um, so um, I really want you to dig in and definitely let me know what you're after. Um, and look, for all of you, the conversation absolutely starts here. And what that conversation is, is who exactly are the humans you are talking to? So if you're a teacher, you might be talking to students or you might be talking to other teachers or other schools, for example. Um, if you're running an event management company and you're looking to get more leads in, in corporate companies, you are specifically after office managers, um, executive assistants or probably the events managers or marketing people. And so this is something that we, we really cannot get out of the blocks, we cannot get started until we know exactly who it is you want to talk to. Um, and the way I often do this is I want you to imagine that there are a hundred people, a hundred specific humans lined up to talk to you about to come up these stairs. So there's a hundred people. I want you to really think about as much as you can about those people. And what I mean by that is how old are they? What is their likely occupation? How much do they earn? Are they from Chicago? Are they a student? Are they poor? Or are they um, a hiring manager for, for an engineering company? So I want you to really understand and know and think about exactly who we're after. So I might pick on someone um, and I want you to be thinking whilst I'm picking on someone. Um, so this, this lovely young gentleman at the front. Um, so tell me about, uh, I'd love to hear, so the very first person lined up to talk to you your perfect audience. And this is someone, um, if you're in business, who is willing to pay, will pay on time, easy to work with. If you're in government, it might be someone else. So I'd love to hear who you might be after. So my specific target audience tonight is any ACT or regional business that is interested in exporting their product or services. 
Fantastic, thank you. So it's a really good statement. So any businesses, ACT in the region, looking to export their products? All right. So I'm going to ask Danielle next. So Danielle, tell me about who your perfect people are. Um, a few of you so yeah. executive assistants for my event management company, um, yeah, marketers, um, people that I could potentially work for or collaborate with. Yeah, fantastic, thank you. That's a really good statement. Would anyone else like to share theirs, Someone, if, if you know specifically who it is? So maybe those, yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, look, my name's Gary. Um, I run a, uh, a small uh, consultancy business. So I'm looking really for two sorts of people. Uh, uh, possible clients into the future who would like to engage uh, me and my team and of course possible consultants to come and work as part of my team. Yeah, perfect. So two pronged. Yeah. And so the very first person in the line lined up to talk to you, are they 56 years old? They're a CEO of, a, of an IT company or an engineering company or who, who's your bread and butter? Who's yours? Probably um, people who come from a military background sure. or defence background, that's my background and that's where I focus most of my effort, um, that have had a reasonably lengthy period uh, of service so they understand the operation and the cycle of defence within the government context um, and have got the experience to uh, draw on um, as they're trying to provide advisory services, particularly into things like project management areas. Yeah, really good statement. Can you start to imagine who that person might be? So we are no longer in an age where we might put an ad on TV and hit everybody from a two-year-old little girl right through a seven-year-old man. We're in a world where we're really able to come out and pick out a specific human, like market to one person. So, and so for Gary's business, that's very advantageous. All right, so what we're going to jump on to now, um, and I'd like to let you know at this point, you're all in the right place. So all of these things we can definitely handle, um, and LinkedIn is a great way to do this. So um, I'm just going to give you a really quick, um, a quick rundown on LinkedIn. Can I ask who's not on LinkedIn? So who's, who's not taken the path yet? It's fine if you're not. Um, yep, no worries. Thanks very much. Um, all right, so... Um, First of all, why LinkedIn? Right now on the planet, it is the one and only network for professionals. Um, there's no other social media network, like there is not a number two right now. And so many, in looking through most of your profiles, in Australia, we've got just over um, 7 million people in Australia with a LinkedIn profile. Um, the three stats that I think are really worth knowing is number one, the average salary on LinkedIn in Australia is $109,000, which indicates it's a pretty senior person. Number two is that 83% of professionals have a LinkedIn profile. And the third and final stat I wanted to give you is 67% of them are active, which means they're looking at it three times or more per week because you know a lot of things and many of you may be the same you might have started with it but just forgotten about it or just let it ride um, in Australia we're the fourth top country in the world per capita for LinkedIn so it's very popular people seem to really like it um, interestingly in Canberra we've got a few of the groups who are the lower adopters which Gary will be really pleased about so military is actually one of the lower adopters but there's still a lot of people on there um, and also um, yeah public servants more generally so <laughs> they're not as strong on it so um, so yeah, and so these are the usage stats, basically saying that yes, people are still using it and it's growing. Um, so that's probably the big numbers to remember. Look, what I'm going to do is go through tonight um, in three key sections. Um, and so section number one is absolutely building your profile. So this is the first thing we do. So before we, just like with a website, um, before you want to get lots of traffic to your website, you want to build a good website. And so same with LinkedIn. So those of you who've made it onto Wi-Fi, if you want to log into your LinkedIn profile now or bring it up, any problems, just throw up your hand and myself or one of the guys will come and give you a hand. Um, we're going to log in and we're going to actually make some changes. We're going to actually go and have a look at your profile um, or do feel free to write it down if you'd like to. Does anyone know how many things there are you can change on LinkedIn? Like, so if I, if I sat there right now with a brand new profile, do you know how many, th how many elements or items I could go and fill in, like first name, last name? Does anyone know to have a crack at that? Um, yeah, I've done all of that, but one of the problems that I had was yeah. removing something because I found I had too much information 
Yes. For example, I had my, you know, my leading certificate. Who the hell cares? You know, um, yeah, they're not interested. Yeah. Um, but I can't remove it. No worries. I'll have a look at that for you for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, look. So, there's about 86 different elements in a LinkedIn profile, which is off the chain, right? Like that's too many to manage and handle. And so, through building thousands of LinkedIn profiles, I'm going to show you the seven areas that matter. If you do these well, I can guarantee you'll have a top 10% LinkedIn profile in the country, and much more likely a top 5% profile. And the reason you would do that. Um, is because you'll get found and also people are a lot more likely to connect with you and I'll go through why that is and how that works. Um, does anyone want to tell me, so on a LinkedIn profile, so this is a, a profile up here, um, does anyone want to tell me what the most important element, so element number one that we're going to focus on tonight, what's the most important one on LinkedIn? That's correct, yeah. People are shallow. Um, they, they look at your photo and they judge you. So. Um, <laughs> They, people really do, so all the studies point to this, they make an instant judgement. And so if you don't have a photo, um, you're 76% you're less likely to show up in the search at all, you're deemed to be a bit of a fake profile. Um, and also having a, a nice photo is absolutely critical. So I'm not going to go on a, about it for ages, but it's really... Hi. Um, so what's really important is having a photo, so those at the back, if that screen on your, um, on your right is easy to see, that's fine. Um, the best photos are actually smiling photos, generally professional, from here up. Um, and the, the sole goal of these photos is that people look at them and go, yes, I'm comfortable to meet with that person. If, if, you t if your photo looks a bit like a mugshot when you've been arrested or you've been at a party um, or you've got your glow sticks and your doof doof, it's just not going to fly well for this kind of platform. So I'm going to talk to quote the castle, I'm going to talk quite a bit about the vibe of LinkedIn. And so, like I might say to you that, um, you know, Facebook is a bit like a barbecue, whereas LinkedIn is a lot more like a boardroom. Um, yeah, and Instagram might be a bit more like an underage nightclub if you're into that kind of thing. Um, so we'll talk about that just for what's appropriate on these platforms and what's a good way to interact and work with people. So, number one is the photo. So, if you do not have a photo or don't have a nice photo, um, you need to get that done. It's critical. So, I found a whole lot of nice photos. Um, so, um, so, a whole lot of interesting ones. Um, so, which ones do you like up here? Which one do you like the best, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so really have a think about your photos. So, there's some really nice ones there, so some that could do with some improvement. Um, but just like when you first meet with someone, for your work, would you normally wear a suit or do you wear high vis or, you know, what might you be wearing? If you wear glasses, make sure you're wearing glasses because I guarantee you people are making a snap judgement. Um, so photos are pretty critical. Okay, so number two, um, and this is where I want you to give this one a go. Um, so the second one is, um, is something called the headline, is just below your name, so you have your photo, your name, and just below that, and this is the second most important one, is actually your headline. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do this, so I'm going to sit on the computer and do this for you. Um, and so you can see mine on the screen, so I've actually put, and this is um, pretty good practice, um, is that I've put my, uh, my title and my company, and then I've put four to five keywords of exactly what I'm best at or what I feel I'm an expert or quite strong in. So if you're in event management, you'd probably write event management. You'd probably put um, people skills, you might put digital media or social media. Um, if you're a consultant um, in government or defence, I'd definitely put that. Um, so I really want you to think of this just like um, if there was a front page article about you in the Canberra Times, what would the headline of that article be? Um, so I want you to give this a go and I'm going to update mine as we're talking as well. So this is, this is LinkedIn here. When you first log in, you'll have a view like this um, and what you want to do is click on me up in the top right hand corner and just click on view profile. So you want to go to your own profile um, and then there's a little blue pen in the top right hand corner um, and we want to click on this one and that pen is just to edit it. So, and, and in here is where you can change each of these details. So I'm going to change mine. I noticed it actually said speaker and I'm going to change that to public speaker. 
So you can just go in and edit that. And so, it, so if you're comfortable, I'd go and edit it right now. Um, and you can save that and update it as ma many times as you like. Um, so, there's a f so you only get 120 characters, that's it. So if you're looking for a new role, I would absolutely say leading engineer in defense, for example. Like I'd really give your key points or your strength points because when people search you in Google, or on the web or in LinkedIn, this is what shows up. Your photo, your name and this line, that's it. Could it be like a, a tagline? Absolutely, yes, it sure can, yeah. I suppose a big one is really thinking about what your clients might be searching. So if they're looking for uh, defence consultants, I'd make sure I had those terms in there. So um, often uh, keeping it simple and straightforward is, is pretty important. So. So give that a go, um, and you can change this as many times as you want, so you're not setting it in stone. Okay, and so Danielle's question was really good. Can I use a tagline? And so up on the screen at the moment, I've actually got the three best performing options. Um, so these are the ones that people respond to best. So um, number two, uh, so number three is a narrative, or a, a, like a short sentence saying, leading defence contractor in Canberra, focus on IT and security, for example. That might be your, your full tagline. Yeah, 120 characters is very short, yeah. Just a question, are these slides available after the... Absolutely, the yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to email them out to all of you. Yeah, and if there's anything else I mention, um, like uh, templates or tools, just let me know and I'll send through anything you need. All right, yeah. Are you saying that that's in order of importance, like option one being more favourable than five keywords? Uh, you're correct, yes. And this is based purely on, um, on research and performance, yeah. So people often just have personal choice, but yes, they are in order, yeah. Yep. All right, look, we're going to keep going. So feel free to keep playing on that one. So there'll be a little bit of homework if you really want to crush LinkedIn. So number three, um, and this is, uh, I think I found a few of you have done this well, but not many of you, um, is that your contact details. So um, it is really important. I'm going to show you where on the screen to update your contact details. So if you get great customers or if you get um, great interviews and things, you need to make sure that people can actually contact you. So in this exact same spot, so where we updated the last one, um, we can actually come in here. So it's actually on the right hand side. Um, so hopefully you can see that. So there's a blue pencil on the right hand side. So I'm in my profile, which is where we went. And this little pencil on the right hand side, and you can actually go and enter in. And at a minimum, I recommend you have your phone number and work email address and a street address if you have one that you're comfortable with. And, what I, and an office address is what I'd recommend. If you don't have one, don't put it, that's fine. Um, but you absolutely need to have your contact details here. And this is just your connections that will get this, not just anybody from the street, so, so people you accept. Um, and so I've added my website on there. So those of you with a business or a consulting business would absolutely have your website on there because you want people to show interest in what you're doing. So, uh, what information did you recommend that we have? Uh, look, phone number, the best number for you, an email address and a fixed address, like a street address, is what I recommend. So if, you have a, um, if you're in a government office, that's fine, just have your address for that. Um, and straight away, LinkedIn would assess your profile um, as a much higher quality one for having that. Mm. Yeah. Personal number or work number? Uh, look, I would just go work, um, but look, to be honest, whichever one's best to get in contact with you. So some people put a switchboard, um, whatever, you know, makes the most sense, yeah. All right, who's ready for the next one? So, 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 so you can keep plugging away at that one, and, or that can be um, a, um, a bit of homework. But this is a really critical one, is your contact details. So if you make contact with somebody, this is absolutely what you want to be doing. Um, so that is number three, is your contact details. Um, and yes, the slides are absolutely available to all of you. Um, number four, which we're actually not going to do this evening, um, but this is one that makes a huge difference. Um, and this one is the only field in all of LinkedIn that you can actually write whatever you'd like to write. It's an open field and it's called your summary. Um, so can I ask who 
who knows what LinkedIn was originally created for? Like when it was first created um, back around 2006, 2007, what was the actual, this platform made for? Does anyone know what it was primarily used for? Private networks was one, what was that? To find people. To find people, yep. To get connected with professionals. Yep, that's pretty good. There's one more word I'm looking for. They're all correct. Um, mainly just finding jobs. Um, so just recruitment was the big one. Um, and so for a long time, so it's, it's an absolute gift to recruiters, right? However, in the last probably three to four years, it has changed substantially to being a lot more about what the three of you just said, which is about um, networking to find other professionals and that kind of thing. And so what this is, is you know, you've all got those hundred people lined up on those stairs that you want to talk to, those exact humans. What we're going to do for this area is write them an open letter. So if, those, if my 100 people walked in right now and they walked out in front of me, so let's take, um, let's take Danielle's. So I've got a whole heap of event managers across Canberra from all the corporates. So from Canberra Airport, Icon Water, ActuAGL, all these people. She's got 30 seconds in front of them. What does she say to them? Danielle Ferry events aim to create effective and measurable experiences through collaboration and consideration that connects brands with the Our team has the creative thinking expertise and industry contacts to make ideas come to life through compelling events and supporting media campaigns. Oh, who wants to get event management down here? That's <laughs> That's it. It's really good. Yeah. So look, that's a really nice statement. And so look, what I've done, I've put together a bit of a, a, a template for what works best. Um, and look, I, I know it's really small on the screen, so I'll just give you the four key sections. And so in terms of users, the, the thing that works best is number one is call out your prospects pain points. And so for Gary, what that might be is, are you short of people? Are you short of expertise? Do you require th these kind of skills in your unit or in your area? And so for me, I'll read a tiny bit of mine. Mine is by no means perfect. But what I've written is said, um, it's likely, I've actually said, if you're a CEO or head, of, or head of marketing in business or government, so that's my exact prospects, and I've said you're most likely struggling to grow. You find it really hard to keep up. It's really hard to stay on top of, t on top of technology. Um, and you need to keep creating more sales. Um, so these are some of the pain points I've read it off straight away and generally this will really get their attention. Um, the next thing, part two, is writing three to four sentences about what will establish your experience. So show you're an expert and the things that do that best in the testing um, are saying things generally about I've got 12 years experience in this or 22 years experience in this. Um, we've worked in these areas um, and we've worked with these kinds of companies. So these are the current clients. So these are all proof points. So you might want to put in your studies. So if you're looking for your next role, you might want to say I've studied this program, I've worked in these, these areas and here's what I can do for you. So just establishing your personal credentials. Part three, and this is a bit more on the corporate side um, and government side, is about saying what are the credentials of your organisation. So if you work with ACT government or if you work in, a, in a consulting, you'd say, yep, we're an organisation or if you work in teaching, we're an organisation that does these things. Um, we've got a history in these areas. Here's our specialties. Um, and the fourth area is by far and away the most important. So if you don't do any of the other three, um, so you get 2,000 characters in this area, which is about four paragraphs. And the fourth one is the most important, which is absolutely a call to action. And what that means, so I've written, um, yeah, if you want to um, grow your digital presence, please get in contact. I'd love to share with you what's been happening in digital. Um, my phone number is this, my email is that, or get in touch with me via LinkedIn. So it's really important people know you're open and available and ready for, for work or business or for new roles or whatever it might be you're looking for. So it's really important. Um, I mean this with all respect, but um, I highly recommend speaking on LinkedIn as though you're speaking to someone with a comprehension of an eight-year-old. Um, that's what you're dealing with often because they are not in your world. They're not in your business. They're not in your job. They don't understand what you do. They've never met you. Um, and so if you think about an eight-year-old, eight they might say, 
when do we get there? I want a drink. How, how cold will the drink be? How much will it cost? I, haven't, I lost my shoe. I can't find my sock. Like, you know, these are so really simple, broken down points. Um, explaining what it is you do is the best approach here. Is that making sense so far? All right. How do you distinguish between the personal and the professional? Like that's such a thing for government, for example. Like on social media, you, can, you don't mention the government or anything the government's working on, on Facebook, for example. And then on here, you're kind of combining your own like job hunting with bragging about the place you currently work for. Yeah. Yeah, and look, it, it's, look, th this is a wonderful question. So, um, look, what I highly recommend to use LinkedIn for is really focus on your personal um, brand and personal presence. So, um, without getting fired is a big thing. Um, but look, you know, each of you might be the president of a soccer club, you might work in the ACT government, you might be involved with your kids, um, with uh, scouts or whatever. So all these different things I'd have in there, if it's appropriate to have stuff about the government in there, put it in there. If you're not allowed to, you just, normally you would though, yes. Um, so it's just government kind of probably hasn't caught up in many ways. Um, and if you're looking for another role, um, be really aware these are public. So if you're currently in a role, um, you need to be pretty careful and pretty cautious because all these elements we've talked about so far are public. So people can see these. Is that an okay answer? Happy to chat afterwards, of course. <laughs> just, just in terms of what is and what isn't public, there is certain information to do with who has looked at your profile, for example. Um, so there, there's a question about who can view that data or um, how uh, people might be able to get about the information uh, without leaving footprints, for example. Yeah, yeah. How does person do that? Uh, to, to not leave footprints? Yeah, this is what I do. I, I call it stalker mode. Um, so, yeah, so I'm always on stalker mode. So, um, my friendly assistant, Aiden, will, will assist here. Um, and so, so we've gone on and clicked up, you know how we clicked on my, my profile? So if you just click on that one, Aiden, um, and it drops down, and we actually want to click on this thing that says settings and privacy. Um, so we've gone up to view profile and then settings and privacy. So if you want to click on that one, mate, um, and then in here, so this is the next screen that comes up, and right in the middle is, is a heading that says privacy. So we want to select privacy. Um, this might get a bit tricky on this device, but the d instructions will be perfect. Um, so privacy, and, there's a, and this is my favourite setting, um, and it, it is actually this one. It, so it's called Profile Viewing Options. And so exactly, what was your name again? Ian. It was Ian, thank you. Exactly what Ian said is, do you know when you go and visit people's profiles, so when you go and check out your ex-girlfriends, I mean, I'd never do that. <laughs> nah. Um, when you go and check out other people's profiles, it definitely notifies them and says, Colin Anstey has visited your profile, but you can absolutely turn that off. And look, I d always have it off, and not because I do that ex-girlfriend thing, but um, because I'm often looking at competitors and researching maybe other teachers or other consulting groups maybe. And so in here, we click um, profile viewing options. So we click on change, yep. Um, and there's actually three options only. Um, the first one is full visibility. Um, so they can see exactly who you are. The middle one just says your role, so uh, somebody in uh, marketing in Canberra. And the last one is the one I use, Ian, which is anonymous. So I can go and look at all of your profiles, which I did, and um, you wouldn't have known I came and looked at your profiles other than the fact I connected with quite a few of you. So, yeah. So is that not changing what other people can see of you? Or um, is that a setting to change what other people see when they go to your profile? Uh, no, this, this one's actually the opposite. So, um, so I'll just, there's another one that does that though. Um, so what this does, so um, if you go and look at other people's profiles, it won't let them know you've been there. Like it takes away your footprints. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Is that all okay with everyone? Yep. All right, great question. Thank you. All right, so we're going to keep going. So number four, um, I can almost guarantee it'll be one of the most difficult things you ever write in your life is writing something about yourself. Um, it's really awkward. Um, but look, give it a go and just start with the, the fourth section, which is right in that call to action, um, which is if you'd like, if you're interested in consulting services, get in touch. Or if you're looking for an expert in engineering, I'd love to come and work with you or whatever it might be. 
All right, so um, number five. So I've just jumped onto the next one. And remember over this evening, we're gonna go through three parts and we're still on part one, which is about building your profile first. All right, so um, number five is experience. And so looking through a number of your profiles, some of you have done this really well. Um, some of you have done it on a very basic level is that the main thing people look at when they come to your profile, so they'll look at your photo, they'll scan past your headline and they'll find out what your current role is. They'll have a look at what you're doing today. So this is one of the most visited areas. And so absolutely make sure it is up to date. Um, so, and, and what I mean by that, so, um, so you've got your latest role there, your experience, make sure it's the right title, right company. The best performing experience sections um, would generally, so think about that eight year old child would give a really simple description of what it is you do um, in your organization. And I would absolutely give three to five dot points just saying I manage a team of 10 who are responsible for printing and publications for this department. Or I manage a budget of this much. Or I manage a team of six consultants because they just don't know anything about you or your business. Or you might manage 35 lecturers or you know, whatever it might be. Um, so it's really important both potential and future employers um, and clients know exactly what it is you offer and what you can do. Um, so just make sure this one is up to date because this one gets heavily visited. Yeah, sure. What if a person's looking for a role at the time? What should a person add to what they're doing at the moment? Yeah, so, so if they're not working at the moment. Um, so look, there's, there's two options here. So, um, so if you're currently not in employment, so um, I just about always recommend just being completely open and honest. Um, and so I'd just have the, the previous role finishing when it finished and that'll just stay up the top. Um, I would absolutely recommend in your headline, I would just position yourself strongly to say, these are my skills I'm good at. I don't recommend writing seeking for opportunities or looking for opportunities. I, I don't recommend writing unemployed and that kind of thing. And not because there's anything wrong with it in the world, but the testing often carries a bit of stigma with that kind of thing. And it's felt that it devalues a candidate. What I recommend is absolutely um, finishing your role when it finished, giving a strong headline and all your information is strong. And when we privately message people, and we'll get onto that in, in part two actually, is where we contact our prospects when we're looking for roles. Um, this is when we say, I'm currently available for opportunities or I'm currently available for interview and that kind of thing. So I would just recommend having it in the private sphere versus public sphere is, is how I'd play it, but yeah. All right, so um, that was number five is experience. So number six, can anyone tell me what these are or know what they are? And do you have a love or a hate of them? <laughs> Does anyone know what these ones have seen these come up? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've got lots of them. Yeah. I must admit that I'm not convinced about them. I mean, I'll, it just may be me. But it seems as though um, that um, when, when people endorse you for or, or, or recognise a skill set, there's almost like a bit of a moral obligation that you're going to do something back to them. Um, and I've spoken to a lot of my colleagues about that, and, and lots feel the same way, and we just yeah. really then wonder the value of them. I'm yeah. sure they're worthwhile, but you know, that's our view. Thank you. <laughs> my career counsellor at uni told me to get rid of them because it's just like a tick and flick, you know, but you really need about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, look, I'm absolutely with all of you. Um, so, look, they um, are very. So, what they are is these are just one click endorsements saying, yes, this person can do marketing. So, they're pretty lightweight, they're pretty tacky. Um, and so I don't, and you, you're spot on that you can actually, so I endorse my wife for nagging and it still sits on her profile. She doesn't like that. It's really <laughs> nasty. She doesn't know how to get rid of it. Um, 
And so, yeah, but look, unfortunately, um, LinkedIn quite likes them. So if you have, you know, a hundred endorsements and someone else has no endorsements, LinkedIn will like that profile better. So there was a huge number of complaints about these. I don't love them and I never chase them, um, but they, they do have a role in a strong profile. So yeah, so I, I agree with you, Gary, like uh, they're, not, they're not great is my view. So yeah. They should be, yeah, and I suppose there's always, yeah, if you, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I'm just, they should be relevant, but they should be able to be checked out by checking the, um, whoever gave you the endorsement, checking their skills. Absolutely, that's correct. So just make sure you do them with, with integrity and honesty. Like, so if you have worked with someone, endorse them. If you haven't, maybe don't. Um, so yeah, so, um, but look, not a big one. Um, this final one, so number seven, is the one I just want to run you through. And if you do these seven well, these are the ones that will really help um, make your profile banging good. Um, is something called recommendations. And what these are, are a rip-off of back like 10 years ago where you used to get a written recommendation from your friend and, and you just get them to sign it, just say nice things about me. However, these are a bit more accountable in that you can actually see who has endorsed you or it's a recommendation. If you get just three to five of these, your LinkedIn profile will skyrocket. And so what these are are written, like you can write as much as you want, um, but generally just a paragraph is more than fine. Who do you think it is best to get these from? Like a, a review or a testimonial about your work. Who do you think it's best to get these from? Yep, that's a really good one. Yep, fantastic. And what's another one that's really good? Like who else would get it? Yeah, so on, on the other side, yeah, it'd be clients or a big one. So, and colleagues, yep. Perfect, yeah. I suppose those who are best placed to know your skills is, is a really good idea. Um, so your mum and your dad are probably not brilliant. So, All right, so how are you feeling about the profile part? Do you feel somewhat comfortable? So you'll have these slides as a guide as well. Um, and absolutely happy to take any question on this part because what we're going to do is jump on now to part two. So we've switched out of part one and we're going to jump on to part two. So there's just one thing I want to explain in advance of part two. Can someone explain to me um, what is a LinkedIn connection? What, what is that? So once I've built my profile, the next thing we want to do is get people on my profile, right? I want people to see it and get traffic. Um, what is a LinkedIn connection? Does anyone want to take a stab at that? Seemingly simple question. Somebody who's found that, um, an interest in the same field that you have and somebody that you can um, connect with and um, mutually assist. Yep, beautiful. Yep, so it's someone who's consented to connect with you. So it's not like other profiles like Twitter. Um, on LinkedIn, you have to request to connect and they accept. Um, can someone tell me what's the difference between a first degree and a second degree connection? Does anyone know what, that, what that's about? You're on fire. Tell me. Um, the first degree connection is someone that you have connected with and the second degree one is someone in the other person's network that you have Perfect, yep, that's spot on. So um, LinkedIn stole the concept of six degrees of separation. So your first, mm -hmm. first degree connection is someone, your friend, then it's a friend of a friend, friend of a friend. We don't have to worry about anything past third degree because we're in Canberra, it's all two degrees, is that right? Um, so yeah, so that's the concept. Um, so let's jump on to part two um, and part two, this is by far and away the most important part of LinkedIn. So Aidan, if you want to jump into LinkedIn, and so when you log into LinkedIn, this is where you'd normally be on this home screen. And in my humble opinion, this is the most valuable part of all of LinkedIn. And the reason I'd argue you're here tonight and why you'd go through all this effort is this exact feature I'm about to show you is that just like Right now, you all use Google to find websites. LinkedIn, we use to find humans. So it's the biggest directory of professionals on the planet. 
All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to start simple. So Aiden's going to go up the top in that box. So the search box at the top of every screen on LinkedIn. And he's just going to type in, th he's just going to type in three letters. So we're just going to type in CEO. So we're going to do a search for CEOs. So if you want to follow, follow along, feel free to do it. And Aiden, just click on people, the, the second one down, which is people with the title CEO. And so, he's, so Aiden's on my profile right now, so he's live. And what he's done is he's brought up a list of 2.85 million CEOs across the world. So these are everybody on LinkedIn. And so we could go through every one of these um, and start to consider if these are people who might hire me for my next job or who might um, pick me up for my next contract with a business. But this isn't that useful yet, right? Because 2.85 million people is just too many. Like that's, I've only got six friends. I can't, that's way too many. So what we're going to do is zoom this in. So we've got like basically an amazing search function of all of these professionals. And so what Aiden's going to do now is on the right hand side, he's going to come down to locations. And so we're going to zoom this in and type in um, down the bottom, we're going to click add and we're going to type Canberra. Can't believe Canberra is not on the top top five in the world. That's ridiculous. Should be. Oh, did it? Oh, good. <laughs> so we're going to type in Canberra. All right. And so if we scroll to the top now, and so from 2.85 million CEOs across the world, um, because I'm just looking for jobs in Canberra, I've now got 1,167 results of just CEOs across Canberra. So I've got a list of all of these people right now in front of me. So in this search, we just did a really simple one to start with, which was CEO, so Chief Executive Officer, um, and we search on the location of Canberra. Um, but if we're thinking about our target audience, so there's 100 people lined up on the stairs, so we know that Gary is actually going to go. So what do um, why don't we actually, Aiden, if you take, off, so let's start another search and we'll do one for Gary. So let's just go to home again. Um, so we'll just click back on home and it will just clear out that search. And what we're going to do is use another filter. Um, so if you just type in, um, let's type in director, the word director. And so all of you know that you can put any title you want into LinkedIn. So people can call themselves chief visionary or whatever. Let's type in director. And we've got 24.4 million, but Gary's actually going to come into, um, he's going to come over into current companies. So if we click on current companies and we're going to go add and we're going to type in Department of Defense. So he told us tonight that he's looking after defense. Let's have a look. So you might, yep, that top one's good. Okay, so what we've done is once again a really simple search. So we've used a couple of the other filters and we've typed in anybody who's a director and anybody who has said they're in the Department of Defence in Australia. Um, and we've got 798 results of pretty senior people in defence. So that's director level. Uh, sorry, it's actually really tiny and really light grey. It's just above the top result. Sorry, um, you, you're spot on. So, yeah, so, so this is a really amazing function. Um, and what I'm going to do is just show you a couple more things with it. And then I want you to run some searches yourself and I'm going to give you a hand. So if you're look, so yeah. Yeah, can I just ask a question? I mean, yeah. the numbers differ. I've got 530. Um, is that linked to the fact that these are 530 that are in my network, so either first, second or third, or are they 530 on LinkedIn totally in the Department of Defence? Um, this is a great question. So look, LinkedIn has changed this recently. So before, if we all did the exact same search, so you know the lovely people at the back, they got, that, say again, they got. Yeah, so it, LinkedIn, the way LinkedIn makes money is based on who pays for the more premium subscriptions and who's connected to more people. So the answer is yes, it will change. Yeah, so if, um, and I'm going to go, in, can someone remind me, um, we'll, go, we'll talk about those premium subscriptions as well and what that means, yeah. So I'll just finish off this search path and then we're all going to do searches and I want you to be really selfish, like think about um, exactly who it is you want to talk to next and I'll come around and give you a hand. Um, 
But I'm going to give you the, the, the traps for young players, okay? So, and what I mean by that, so um, there's a few filters that are phenomenal and a few that are not. So um, if you can just stick with me for a second and we'll do some searches. The most, so there's, there's hundreds of filters you can use. These are the ones that matter. So number one is title. So you know I use CEO or director. The, the reason that is, is because you can instantly know what they do for a job and people are very religiously good at entering it. People, and it's a bit of a status thing to have your correct title. So title is your holy grail. Um, number two is company. And so you saw for Gary, we went and put in Department of Defence. Um, but you might want to target, if you're an engineer, you might want to target, um, you know, Hindmarsh, for example. So you can go and choose the exact company. Um, number three is actually industry. So if you scroll down a little bit, um, and so if you click on industry, there's 113 different industries there. So, um, so, you, so if you work specifically with defence and aerospace, you can go and select defence. Um, and that will be a whole lot of other consulting groups and things as well. But you know, if you're an, an environmental engineer, you can go and select that industry. So um, these are very good filters that people use a lot and are very powerful. Um, and look, there's just one, fo and sorry, and the, the last one, um, which I should have mentioned earlier, is location. So if you click on location, Aidan, um, this is amazing. So, so many of you, I felt, would focus on Canberra, but a number of you are national and even international. Um, so you can absolutely choose different countries if you're looking to export more or find exporters. Um, it's very, very useful. So it's basically a search engine to find humans is a way to think about it. Yeah. All right. Let's have it. Let's spend 30 seconds um, or, or a couple of minutes and do some searches. I'll come around and give you a hand. Um, and then we're going to jump on to the next bit. So give it a go. And I'm, and I'm going to ask a few of you the results. Uh, LinkedIn is in every country. Um, it is China banned it. Um, so LinkedIn would like to be in China. So China, it's bad for. Um, so we'll do, we'll do a We'll do a CIT session on Weibo. We'll, we'll do that one. Um, so yeah, um, and non-English speaking tend to be much lower use of LinkedIn. It does have multilingual support, but yeah, is there certain areas you're thinking of or China? Yeah, so, so WeChat and Weibo, so really happy to have a chat about those I two. Use yeah, oh, fantastic. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, LinkedIn would love to be in China, but it's um, it's low. There, there's still a lot of people on there, but it's um, they can't access it in the country, so it's a bit of a problem here. Yeah. Well, they, can. <laughs> they just get around it, do they? Yes, they get around it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So let's do some searches. Um, let's give it a go, and I'll come and give you a hand if you're struggling with how it's how it's working operating, and then we're going to look at what we do with it after that. All right, um, we, might, we might continue on. Um, so hopefully you found some good people. Um, did anyone find some good examples? Did you find some good lists in there? How did you go, Gary? Oh, very good. Yeah. Very good. So what kind of people did you find? In fact, the thing that struck me is it's, is it's opened up access to people that, um, interestingly, um, lots of government organisations try not to put out their public yeah. like, like years ago, there used to be the government uh, phone book or functional yeah. telephone directory and yeah. all of that. Um, that it's really hard to get. There's obviously the government online directory you can use to try and identify potential people to talk to. Yeah. But this just makes it so much easier to find people. Yeah, it's very, very useful, yeah. And what about the table at the back? How did you go? Did you find some good people? How did, how did you go? Was it Nikki? Nikki, yeah. Yeah, how did you go, Nikki? Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking for people in a different field to what I currently work in that I can try and get in touch with, sort of, to See what sort of qualifications they've got to get into the role they're in, those types of things. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah, some interesting stuff there. Fantastic, great, excellent. So, look, Phil, did you want to? Uh, uh, as well. I just stalked my son, found out that he didn't have a profile picture, so I sent him a message. Oh, <laughs> that's, oh that's excellent. <laughs> I feel like we've succeeded tonight now. That's great. <laughs> um, so if you want to jump over to the slides, um, Aidan. Um, so what we're going to do, so 
So hopefully um, each of you have found some people or started to search there, and I'm really happy to assist you with this. But so far, all we've done is built a really nice profile and we've gone and looked at people or found lists of people. So we haven't actually done anything yet. So let's just say, and look, I aim to get lists of 100 to 300 people is what I aim for, because if I get a list of 1.58 million people, that's just, I can't work with that, it's not manageable. And so what I might do, so let's take that example, that first one, which was in Canberra, I looked for chief executive officers and I had 1,166. So let's take that as an example. Um, that's still a huge amount of people. And so what I absolutely recommend we do next with this list, so this is a list of prospects or potential hiring managers or potential mentors, whatever it might be. Every single one of these, I absolutely want to go and research them. So I want to know, so if I go through here, and so, uh, for, so I went and did a search for Gary and I found Jeff Millwood. So he's a Deputy Director of Capability at Department of Defence. So we've got Jeff here. I do not just blindly connect with Jeff. I do something much ruder, I go and stalk him. So I, I would absolutely recommend, these people are senior, they're important, um, you know, they're busy, they're getting a lot of contacts through a lot of channels. What we're gonna do is always go and click on their profile and do them the respect to understand how long they've been in their role. Even have a look at how big their team is. Have a look at what university they might have gone to or, um, or TAFE or education group. Um, see what football team they support, see if they're a golfer, all these kinds of things. So get to know about them. So just like at an event, like if I came up to you all now and said, here's my business card, call me, here's my business card, call me, here's my business card, call me, you know, I would be that guy, right? Like no one's going to want to talk to me. I'm not going to get invited to the party again. Whereas if you are really respectful, think about them, think about what they're up to, um, know a bit about their background, know that they're in defence, for example, um, you're going to get much better results. And I'll show you how. Um, so this is probably the first key thing, is do the research. Um, so, um, so we've looked up Jeff and done some research on Jeff. Um, what I'd absolutely recommend you do is when you hit connect, is I would always send a note. Um, so if you, if you have a mutual interest with this person, um, and so something in common, I would absolutely, I would, I would definitely press connect, but I would click um, add a note. And this is the best performing note on the planet that I'm aware of. You just get 300 characters. Um, and this is, what, this is what I wrote to Jeff. I wrote, hi Jeff, I hope you're well. I came across your profile. I noticed you're a Deputy Director at Defence. I also noticed we're mutually connected to Robert Weller and Peter Holden. I run a company called Raging Digital, and we're digital consultants that can assist with your digital presence. Um, regards, Colin. So 300 characters, that's about how long it is. It's not much. But what I really recommend, so what do you notice about that? Does that, does that sound appealing to you or not? Yep, so one is it's personalised, so he knows I've definitely looked at his profile, right? What else? You, you're not di directly selling him something, but you're putting forward who you are and what you have to offer by stating yeah. your company and your... Yeah, absolutely. So I'm pretty clean and honest and authentic and transparent saying, here is what I do. Um, this is why I think we should connect. So just really clearly giving that reason, I don't say, buy this secondhand shady car, buy it now. Um, that will really turn people off. Um, so so you, you pretty much pick that up straight away. So I've used his name, I know his title. We've got mutual friends. So just like if I, if I met someone at an event, um, I, if I knew someone in common, it's probably one of the first things I'd mention to them. Um, and also, like I'd give a little bit of context to why I'm connecting and I'd just, yeah, say regards Colin. So nicely written, nice English, um, that kind of thing. Yeah, yep. Question. How do you deal with the cultural sensitivities of various people's proclivities as to whether they're addressed by first or last name? That's a great, great question. So question was first name or last name. Um, geez, I'm just going to give the honest answer. I, I just go first name always. I just <laughs> I don't even consider it. Um, yeah, so I just go, uh, like I've connected with Richard Branson and Obama and Turnbull. Um, that no one's ever asked me or questioned it, so yeah. But look, if there's someone you think that would appreciate being addressed by their surname, I'd go for it. 
Um, but I've actually never done it. So, yeah. Um, look, the, I, I love this point. So would I tell those people? Um, look, I know these gentlemen really well. Um, and so I've assumed consent. Um, and I'd only ever quote people I know well or who are good friends of mine. Um, so yeah, if I didn't know them and I wanted to use them, I probably would. But otherwise, I'm pretty comfortable with it. Yeah. So because they've connected with me and um, it's generally okay. Um, so generally pretty acceptable on LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah I have sort of like a whole connected to people. And what they generally do is look at your profile, decide if they like it or not, and then maybe look at your connections and then say you're okay or not. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, I love this point um, and it's actually true 88% of the time is that when, when someone gets a connection request, 88% um, of the time they'll check out your profile or make, and that's why we went through and did your beautiful photo and that kind of thing. So, you sp and do you do the same? Like who, when you get a connection request, goes and checks out profiles? Mm -hmm. Who does that? Yes. Nice. Yeah, so look, it, it's, it's absolutely the way to go because you want to make sure they're not a scammer, make sure they're legit and that kind of thing. So, yep, absolutely, yep. Or, yes. So if I wanted to use this way to connect to someone who's not a first connection, <coughs> yeah. how like can I how do I frame frame it sort of the same way or like you know, because say for this example here they're a second connection but I I don't have anything directly in common with this person but I would like to yeah. um Yes, yeah, so there's no there's no mutual connections with them at the moment. It's a, so, so just just on their profile, just below. Um, so ha have a quick look. So this gentleman, I know it's small, but Jeff Millwood had eight shared connection with with me. So I was aware there was eight people, and I chose two. Um, but look. Um, let, 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 let's just assume there's none. So this is a really good question. Um, if there's no mutual connections, um, so I just quote them. Yeah, but if there's none, my second go-to is I would absolutely just say, um, I came across your profile, notice you're a deputy director at Defence, so I, I just wouldn't say anything more than that. I'd just say I know their role. But I'd check it if we went to the same uni or see if we're in the same LinkedIn groups. I'd just look for commonality, really. Like, um, if it's not there, I don't force it, but um, that that's... Uh, Correct, yeah. Um, and I also like, um, this is getting a bit personal now, but if it's someone, um, actually everyone I look up, if I don't find a commonality, I spend 120 seconds and Google them because um, I'm after pretty senior people most of the time. So I say I read your article in Canberra Times recently or I saw your latest product results or I saw you, your last event at the Convention Centre, it was phenomenal. Um, so I would just, just like you would an event, if you know, you know, I'd, I dig generally. Um, yeah, and you can find out a lot of stuff like kids' names and anyway, um, <laughs> what school they go to. <laughs> sorry, there was a question. Yeah, sorry. Just a quick question. Like, if we are uh, trying to connect with someone like some recruiter for the, because my basic concern is for the job purpose, like yes. and not for the business point of view. Yeah. Like, if you are trying to get in to connect with the recruiters, so. Like, what would be the approach for connecting the recruiters or with someone directly? Like, um, like I would prefer I wouldn't use this uh, mode of communication. Just like, if we even have like mutual connections, so I would go for the like, uh, like referring the mutual connections with the recruiter. Yeah, sure. Yeah, look, I think it's a great question. So look, ju just like um, if I burst into a room and I said, yep, my name's Colin, I'm a recruiter, tell me about yourself. What would you say in person to a recruiter? Like that's what I try and emulate in these things. So, um, so you'd say, yeah, hi, my name's this. I, I specialise in these three areas. I'm currently looking for a role. I was hoping for these types of companies or these types of roles. Um, yeah, it'd be great to connect on LinkedIn. Like I, that's, I'd, I'd just think about exactly what you'd say to them if the computer screen wasn't there. Um, yeah, so if you're not comfortable quoting common connections, which I think is right in this case, that's that's how I do it. So and recruiters will connect with you in a second. <laughs> so like almost recruiters, you don't even need to write a note. They just they love it. But and like and I'm not. Well, can I ask what space you're in? What industry or what roles you might be looking at? Um, basically, um, uh, my previous experience is as marketing assistant as well. Yeah, fantastic. But like in the service industry and the uh, manufacturing industry. Yeah. It's 
pick this guy up and um, we'll connect with you. Um, so look, uh, look, I'd take a two prong approach. Um, so for all of you who are looking for roles, I'd absolutely, um, so those hundred people on the stairs, I would absolutely be going for recruiters and the ones in your space. So marketing and advertising in this case, right? But also there is a huge, huge raft just going directly to the hiring managers. So if, if there's companies like, um, I don't know, like Icon Water, for example, you'd like to work in their marketing team, I'd just go straight to the head of marketing and it'll save them $20,000 in a recruitment fee. Um, so yeah, so I'd just be really bold and go directly to the hiring managers. And even, um, I think it was Nikki at the back, I loved what she said was, um, if I've got a head of marketing at Icon Water, for example, um, I would absolutely say, look, I'd, and we'll get onto this bit, I'd love to catch up with you for a coffee in 10 years. I'd love to be doing a role like yours. Um, I'd be really open to any advice you could give to me about what skills I should build, what training I should do, what education. Um, I, can I shout your coffee? You know, so I, I'd, they're the two arms I'd be looking at. Yeah, does that make sense? Yep. All good, awesome, yeah. Um, all right, so um, really thinking through what you might write to them is really important. Um, do not feel obliged to use this approach. Um, do make it your own, do make it personalized, customized, um, but I can give you great guarantees this works very well. All right, so this is my probably favorite feature of LinkedIn, um, and I'm not sure, if, can I ask how many of you have exported your LinkedIn connections, like downloaded them from LinkedIn? Oh, it's the best. What are you doing? Um, all right, let, let's do it. So if you're in your LinkedIn profiles, we're going to download your connections now. Um, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll talk through it. So we're going to go to um, back to settings and privacy. So we go up to me and we go settings and privacy. And so if I'm Gary and I've gone and found a hundred directors in defense that I might want to work with, um, and we've sent them a nice little connection note, once I'm connected with them, this is what I can do. So I'm just in account right now. So if you scroll down a little bit, Aidan, um, and it's actually just here, hidden, um, called get in an archive of your data. So if you click on this one, mate, so get in an archive of your data, um, and then scroll down and just click fast file only and just click request archive. So you can click that. Um, oh, that's awesome. We, we can, you don't have to do that bit. Um, so <laughs> otherwise I have to shout out my password. But what, what this will do, um, so it'll actually, within 60 minutes, it'll actually download. So I've got um, 5,000 plus connections and it will absolutely download. So Aiden, if you jump back to the spreadsheet, and I'll go through it again in a moment if you go back to the slides. This is exactly what I get. So I get first name, last name, email address, company, um, job title, if they've got phone number. So I get this amazing database of the exact humans I'm after. So whether they're teachers or principals, whatever it is. So, um, so LinkedIn has turned off this feature for, before for 18 months um, and everyone fired up. Um, so just make sure you do it and back it up because it could disappear. So. Um, it'll actually just get emailed to you directly um, and you just click download in your email and it'll just pop up and that's just an excerpt of mine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you say you have 5,000 connections? Yes. And did you say before that you have about 300 of them list? Yes, that's generally what I do, yeah. So how do you make a list? Yeah, so that's a great question. So. Um, you know how we were running searches and I ran a search of CEOs, for example? I just call that like a, a list and there was a thousand there. But what I, what, I was, what I aim to do, if there's, I try to trim it down um, to get to just let's say 300 people. Um, and then over, this is how I think about it in my brain, is over a week, if I find 300 people I'm after, um, I'll go through them over a week and I'll never connect with all 300. I'd go through them and choose the 221 that, I, that were appropriate um, and I'll connect with them. And, I'll sh and then um, I'll show you what I'd do next. So in six weeks time, I do the next step. Um, but yeah, but look, my connections over time, like I just, um, just really build them over time. Yeah, yeah. All good. All right, who needs us to go through how to export connections again? Did everyone get that? Was there a question at the back or all good? No, no, no. no I just wanted to say that my son, who is <laughs> working, he says, what are you doing on here? <laughs> <laughs> He's director of a um, IT recruitment company. <laughs>
So you've just blown him out of the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't believe it. Yeah, he doesn't like being stalked by his mother. <laughs> <laughs> the, the data file that comes down with the contacts in it, no. some have email addresses and some don't. Is that because they haven't put one in or because they've set the privacy settings? Um, they'll actually, let's just have a quick look. A lot of gaps there. Yeah, so um, if you if you request, th there was actually, did you see there was two files to down? Oh, here, yeah, see, sorry. if you go connections, try connections. Yeah. That, ah. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's an excellent question from Nikki, is that when you download the data, so she, did you do it just then? So it came, yeah, so it came down instantly, so that's good news. Sorry. Oh, you're, all over, you're all over that. Um, yeah, so it, it's, it came down really quickly and it actually gives you a heap of data, like all the data from your profile. Um, and so um, the, the one where you get the full data is all your connections, anyone you're connected to. So Nikki went and looked at one called Contacts, which you definitely want to do as well. And that's everyone that's ever interacted with you on LinkedIn, which is also very interesting. So um, anyway, so some amazing data and I can almost guarantee LinkedIn will turn off this feature. Because who owns LinkedIn now? Does anyone know who owns LinkedIn? That was a call from very quick at the front from Microsoft. So Microsoft bought them about five months ago now. So, um, and they're a bit nasty, so they'll probably turn it off. <laughs> yeah, so I'd definitely download it. All right, so is everyone okay up to here, up to this point? Um, yes, except I'd like to go back um, eventually, if possible, you've got time to profile and say, well, what you should actually have in your profile. I mean, I've got all my you know, oh, you yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So look, I'll come and have a chat with you if that's right. We'll, we'll tidy it right up, yeah. I put my first job in there, like at McDonald's. I was like really good on the grill. I was, and, I, and I just, I just rate it, so it's still there. Um, but it's hard to make choices, <laughs> yeah. So we'll have a look at it and which jobs are still relevant, I suppose. So. Yeah, yep, fantastic. All right, so um, ex so first of all, I have to connect with these people and then I'm able to export, like they'll only show up, I can only export their details once I've connected with them. So yeah, so we're gonna jump on to the next part now. So, um, so part one was building our profile. Part two is by far and away my favorite part which was that going out and just picking out those individual um, recruiters or those hiring managers, those exact people I want to pick off. Um, because I want to create, like if I'm Danielle and I run an events management company, I do not want 10,000 customers. I just want 100 amazing customers. And that might just be 100 people. It's not, I don't need to go on TV to do this. Um, so this is probably the most important part is this part is part three and the reason that is is because we do not want to come across as a used car salesman does anyone sell cars because i'll stop using that no, good i'll stop using that if <laughs> you probably have in the past um so we want to really come across as that premium operator we want people to know we're auth authentic transparent and trustworthy right we do not want to be seen as a fake or an impersonator or whatever and so the way to do that on LinkedIn is through something called content marketing. And what all that means is once I connect with someone, I do not instantly go and say, let's, ca let's catch up today. I, I want to see you and I'll bring a proposal and I'll sell you this stuff. Um, that is going to end up with a really bad experience. And so the people who do best on LinkedIn, so can I ask who, who in their LinkedIn feed has got someone who stands out, someone um, you either love or hate? Is there someone you really like or dislike? With the content that comes through or posts? Yeah, and, and tell me about that person. Um, it's probably um, um, a woman called um, <laughs> um, she just ripped it. <laughs> um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's somebody who runs a um, culturally diverse, um, uh, um, the manager of a culturally diverse um, uh, company, um, uh, Gary Melvin, who um, posts, yeah, posts regularly, yeah. updates on, you know, just different things that are happening in, um, in the field that she's working in in particular. Yeah. Um, good news stories, primarily. Um, 
um, along with um, you know yeah things that are you know events that are taking. Yeah. And and do you look forward to her uh, her yeah. updates? Yeah, it's always okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right, and so, so that's a good news story. And so, and so people like Bernard Salt or Richard Branson or some of these people who've got really nice, hard-hitting, contextual, important updates that make you feel like they really know what they're talking about. Um, and so for each of you, when we're going to connect with hiring, let's, let's take the example of the hiring managers in the marketing space, for example. So let's take the, the heads of marketing groups it is really important they see you as someone who knows about analytics or who knows about digital or who knows about event management, for example. Um, and so being able to share content about particularly what's happening in the future is very popular. So these next two slides have taken me about nine years to write. And, the re and you'll get a copy of these. And what they are is these are the top 50 topics that people want to hear about on LinkedIn. Not what you want to write about, what they want to hear about. And so it's really important, like, so whenever I'm posting content on LinkedIn and writing things up there, I'm absolutely thinking the 100 people on the stairs, uh, um, that's who I'm talking to. So in our, in our um, office on Marcus Clark, I, it's a, this is actually really creepy, but if you come to my office, you'll see it. Like I've got printed out faces of my favorite clients. Like I've got them printed out there. So they're like watching me. And I think about, you know, if they're 15 years experienced heads of marketing, for example, these hiring managers, I'm not gonna post about what is the internet, right? Like they're gonna go, oh, that's awful. But if I say what's gonna be happening with Facebook in 2028, um, and give stats and data about what might be happening, they'll go, geez, this guy really knows what it's about. So really position yourself as an expert in the, in the eyes of the people you're after. Um, and so I know these are really small, so I'm just gonna read a couple of these topics out to you of how to post on LinkedIn. So can I ask who's posted on LinkedIn before? So who's put a status update out before? Great, so just a few of you. So I'm gonna go through the topics and we're gonna have a look at how to do it in a moment. So we'll jump onto LinkedIn. So can I ask who's put an update on Facebook before or, or Twitter? Okay, so it's the same, LinkedIn just ripped off what Facebook does basically, so that's the same, same concept. So look, a couple of my favorite topics here. Um, what is a success story that you can share? So a great project you delivered, something you work with a client, a great job you've done somewhere. Um, what are the biggest myths in your industry? So um, in, in marketing, there's a huge amount of myths around how much things cost and fakes and frauds and things. Um, what's a hard truth your customers need to hear? And this is a really big one for someone like Gary um, with Defence. Um, they have a very specific way of operating and the hard truth they might need to hear is you're doing it wrong, right? So, um, so thinking of, this is the things that people will actually click on and read. So. Um, and this is, um, this is an amazing guide. Um, for some of you, they won't be appropriate, for, but for many of you, so this is page one, um, and page two is the next, next line of them. So we'll just um, jump onto those. Um, and so you'll have a copy of these. And so you often see a lot of this. What's a quote that applies to your business or industry? What's your biggest passion? What are the biggest secrets about your industry? I saw someone put up Colonel Sanders' 11 secret herbs and spices the other day. It blew my mind. That's like public now. Um, so yeah, and so just thinking about what it is your prospects um, want to know about or want to read about is really important. Um, and so if you're in a larger organisation, so potentially like um, ACT government for example, it's quite normal that you'd plan content. So you'd actually put together a calendar and say, yep, we're going to do it this time and date. This is a really good reference or resource to be able to do that, um, do that with. So. All right, um, and let's, let's jump to LinkedIn and I'll just show you how to do an update. Um, and so we're gonna go to, it's actually not in your profile, it's actually in home. Um, so, and there's, there's just right at the top of home is this box here. Um, and so it's just like Facebook, but there's one major difference with LinkedIn is that when you post content, do you know who sees your content? So let's just say you've got 500 connections on LinkedIn and you post a great article about what is the future of Facebook in the next 10 years. Let's just say that's what you wanted to write about. Who actually sees that update? Who sees that post? I assume it was only connections. 
Yep, yeah, so just connections? The connections in, uh, like the connections in my profile who would be related to marketing, like marketing professionals, direct, directors of marketing or relating to marketing. Yeah, yep. So, so there's, there's um, I'll, I'll give you two answers to this. So number one is um, about 35% of your connections will see it, that's it. That, that's how LinkedIn works at the moment. So about a year ago they came out and said that. But the moment someone likes that, all of their network will see it as well, like, comment or share. Um, and so that's how you really start to get speed. But let's just say I'm, um, yeah, so if I'm Nikki and I've put up a, a beautiful post um, and I've actually gone and connected with 100 people in the industry I want to work in next, I put up the post and 35% of them are going to see that you've posted about this topic that's of great interest to them. And so in terms of how much content, about three times a week will get you up to about 100% of your connections will see this. So if you really wanted to crush LinkedIn, the best people are kind of doing about three posts a week. Anything more than about three, people think you're not working. Um, they think you're just on LinkedIn all the time. Yeah. It's a question, it's just a case of almost guerrilla marketing, about posting the same post three times. Um, yep. So. I would, um, that, that's a great question actually. Look, I would generally not go for that. Um, I w it's okay to have the same topic and just change it a little bit. So um, take a different angle on it, a different perspective on it. So because um, actually events is a really good example of that where you might say, um, you know, tickets selling fast, um, here's what you'll learn at this event. And then a day later you might do a different angle on it is here's what one of our keynotes will talk about. Generally repeating the same content I'd tend not to do. So, yeah. so the reason was, if yeah. you want to capture 100% of your, your, your uh, contacts, yeah. is it another different 35% or just a, a spread which may capture some of those that may not? It, it, it may capture, um, but also on your profile, it'll keep a history, it'll show on your profile that you've posted the same thing three times as well, so that's probably more of a, a worry. But yeah, very good. Th I love the way you think though. <laughs> it's awesome, yeah. All right. So, um, there are actually two different ways to post on LinkedIn. So, two different types of content. Does anyone know the two different ways to post on LinkedIn? It's getting a little bit trickier now. So, on Facebook, there's really just one way. You just do your status update. Does anyone know on LinkedIn how it goes? <coughs> yeah. I was wondering that uh, my question was really going to be about um, how the news feed works. Is it towards that, the news feed? And um, like a public out there to everybody? Yep. Article? It's actually, yeah, this is actually, it's actually really related. So no other platform does this right now. So it's really interesting to know. Um, and just because I knew I had this session coming up, I just thought I'd do some guerrilla work as well. And I'll show you the results um, of what I did in a moment. But I'll just explain to you. So there's number one, and the normal way to post on LinkedIn is just a status update, which is just like Facebook, where you might share an article, an image, a video, and put a nice update saying, here is the future of digital signage um, for event marketing. Have you thought about LED approaches, for example? That's what you might talk about. The second type, which doesn't exist on any other platform, is one called write an article, where you can write original content. So the first one is where you normally share someone else's content. The second one, which is just here, so I can either do the status update here, or this special one is write an article. So if you don't have your own personal website right now, you can actually use LinkedIn to publish your own original articles about your views on light rail or your views on the defence um, capability projects coming down the line, or, or about um, marriage equality, or whatever it is, you, or not for profit, so whatever it is you might stand for. So it's actually a complete blogging platform as well. Um, is, that, is that making sense, a little bit of sense? I've only ever used Writer and Article, um, but um, how, I'm not sure how you actually post a newspaper article on Facebook, for example, I don't know, you post an image of a article. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. I'll definitely show you how to do that part. So you're you're ahead of the curve um, if you're writing articles already. So, um, so does anyone um, want to tell me which one's better or worse? Um, I might answer it actually. Let, let's uh, we'll, we'll jump to the case study. 
um, because I did this just a, um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so Mr. Aiden, if you're comfortable, are you happy to jump to the PowerPoint? And I'll just jump forward and I'm gonna just show you the results. So I, what I did, um, so like the gentleman, what was your name at the back, sorry? Dave. Da yeah, so like Dave said, I really like this approach. So um, what I did, um, so I'll come back to this. Um, but now you got me excited. So, um, so I just thought I'd do a little case study knowing this session was coming up and I was writing employment contracts for my company and I, I tried to rip off all these ones from Google and I didn't rate them, I thought they were crappy. Um, and so I wrote these new employment contracts for my company and so this is the entire contract I wrote. Um, so this is what I might give to one of my employees. Um, so yeah, based on I'll listen to you, you listen to me, um, tell me what you need, I'll do my best to get it. Um, so let's work together and get it done. So it's more about a personal agreement anyway. So I thought it was quite interesting um, and so I thought I'll post this up on LinkedIn and so I posted it up twice, so a bit like what Dave was saying, but I did one as post an update which is a status update like Facebook and the second one I wrote an article, so a bit more like a newspaper article um, and I did it at the same time, it's the same content. Um, because I wanted to test the algorithm, like test which one would, because I've got the same, it's me, same number of connections, everything's the same other than just the two different versions. Um, and so this one, so I wrote, um, I took a blank sheet of paper and wrote our new employee contracts. I think I've covered everything. Can you see anything missing? And so this one did really well. So I got 95 likes and 22 comments. Um, this one, I wrote what employment contracts should look like. And I just wrote a little bit about basically saying the tasks we love and tasks we hate. Um, I didn't want to do this, but I thought I'd take a new approach. Um, and this one got 330 likes compared to 95 likes, um, 25 comments, 35 shares, and 1,810 people clicked that. So it was about 400% um, better to write an article, to write original content. Um, and the reason being is because, you know, the first version, the status update, this post and update, goes to about 35% of your connections. This write an article goes to 100% of your connections. So it's a massive advantage right now to be writing original articles. So they can be short. Um, so, um, yeah, um, do you want to jump into my LinkedIn profile and, and go to that article? And I'll show you what the full thing looks like. So it took me like six minutes. Um, it took me no time at all. So, yep, so here's the article here. And so if we click on it, so this is what my connections or users have a look at. So, um, yep, so that, that's actually an image there. That's the headline. So it looks just like an article and you can scroll down and see, um, yeah, I wrote a little blurb and then just pasted it in there. And then lots of people have put comments and stuff. But look, the, the point is, um, it is really powerful to do it that way at the moment, so. And all those likes and comments came from your connections, your 5,000 connections, before. <laughs> that is a great question. Look, I, I've been through a number of them. I'd say about 20% are from my connections. So I've had contacts from New York and Chicago and had um, people all over the world. Um, yeah, I've had three Olympic gold medalists like it. Like, yeah, I went a bit stalky. Um, but yeah, like as once some, one of my connections likes it, all of their connections can see it. And lots of people added comments and shared, like so 37 people shared it out themselves and said we should do this at our company or whatever. So it really um, started to move, I suppose, the idea. Um, and you know, my agenda, and I'll get, and this is what I wanna get into about content, right? My agenda here is I'm really looking to hire amazing people. Um, and so I thought, oh, I'll just publish my contract, I'll just put it up. Um, yeah, and I've had lots of contacts of people saying, we'd love to come and work with you, and also clients saying, yeah, we're really interested in working with a group that thinks differently. So, um, so it's probably not that, it's not me saying, come and buy digital stuff from me. It's taking quite a different approach, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, both of those types of posts, like the post and the article, appear on that homepage, scrolly screen. Confirmed, that's right, yeah. So. Scrolly screen, I like that much better than, than news feed. That's, that's good. Um, so yeah, they'll both appear in the news feed. Difference is, is that um, when I write an article, every single one of my connections will get a notification saying Colin Anstey has published an article. Um, and a fair few people just click that just to see what I was mucking around with. But yeah, so it, it just gets much higher um, precedence. Tell me how you find the articles that you've previously written? Yes. 
Yeah, are you happy to do So let, let's go back to the home, so we'll just go back to the home screen from where you first log in. Um, and so this is where you'll come in. So to find your stuff, does anyone find LinkedIn really hard to navigate? Yeah, it's, re it's really annoying. <laughs> yeah. My thing just comes up with write the post. I can't see where it's, or write the article. I can't see where it says update the status. Yeah, you actually just start writing in that box. It's just a blank box and you just start writing. That's your statement. That's your statement. Yeah, so yeah, you just don't click on that write an article. You just start, so he, if you look at this screen here, sorry. Um, so basically this is, that's where you just start writing here to do a status update. Oh. Or if you want to do that special article I'm banging on about at the moment, you click so if you click write an article now, mate, um, so click write an article, this pops up the thing where I can write a headline, add a picture and start doing that. So that's the, di it's not that obvious, yeah. What's the thing that comes through that's like a news feed and picks up the best articles or the most liked articles and, and there's also a, a LinkedIn feature that does um, sort of uh, picks out the best of yeah. like 2016, that sort of thing, because I've got some rippers coming through from that. Yeah. Into my email, but I'm not quite sure how. Yeah. Um, so, yes, so there's a news feed and it will try and prioritize, so this is my news feed right now, so it'll try and prioritize the best stuff for you. Um, there's also notifications that you'll get an email on, you can turn those on or off. Um, and there's also a third option, um, and I'll have a chat to you after the session to show you how to do this. It's just called LinkedIn Pulse, which is when someone like Barack Obama publishes something, um, he's a top article and everybody gets, that gets promoted to them. So, um, so there's three types, yeah. But look, we'll keep, we'll keep going. Um, so if we can um, jump back to the, um, to the slides, and I'm just gonna go through the content, just the final content part for you. Um, I apologise, I've jumped around a tiny bit, but um, so I'm just going to, I got excited about the case study. I was really excited. Um, so let's, let's just jump back a tiny bit. So we look through those top topics. So the, 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 if you're not sure of what to write, um, they are the topics to write about. All right, so who's got time every day to sit there for an hour and write articles and post content and connect with people. Who's just got an hour right now, they're just twiddling their thumbs? <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you do nice. it, you find it. <laughs> <laughs> the nice, I like it. So, um, and so look, what I want to put to you is it's very rare people have got just extra time. And so I'll show you how I do it really quickly, really effectively, but give it punch, like give it good quality. Um, and so number one, is that um, only about 30% of my content is my own content, is stuff I write. 70% of the entire internet is someone else's content. And this is whose content I use. So for my marketing, all these groups provide free, high quality, great content. So for the gentleman who's looking to go into marketing, um, you should absolutely just rip this off, um, is that look, I use Forbes and BRW and ITY, CIO, I use ABC. These are all free websites that are publishing sites that are producing high quality, great content that I can share. Um, so it takes me, um, you know, sometimes 10 minutes to do a cracking good update versus if I have to sit there for two hours and write an article or in government it might take you two months to get a video and write something and get approvals and things. So sharing other people's content should be 70% of your focus normally. And this is the best hack that there is. So can I ask who uses Google Alerts right now? So it's, it's a free little tool. So if, if you don't use Google Alerts right now, you just go to Google and type in Google Alerts. And what it does is that, so Danielle will go to Google Alerts and type in event marketing or event management. And she might type in um, Canberra Convention Bureau. And anytime anything on the planet happens, um, it'll actually get served up to Danielle via email once a day saying here is the top 10 articles that got published around the world about event management. And so around digital marketing or marketing or around the industry you're looking to jump into, around IT teaching, um, you can absolutely make it so you don't have to go and trawl the web. You can just go and set this up and it will just serve up the best content to you. Um, yeah, so look, I do this every day and so I've got one set up for social media and digital marketing, that kind of stuff. And I, I, I just share the ones that I love. If there's not one that I love, uh, if there's not one I love, I do not share it. So. 
Yeah. So, you, so, yeah, so you just get a Google alert and download if you scroll through there's something that's relevant to your business and that you think is relevant to connections. Just copy and share? Yeah, so, so, so let's jump onto this right now. So what I do is just copy the link. So I found a great article about Facebook in 2028. Um, so I'd always read the article. Um, and this is what I'm looking for in the best content that people want to read. So number one is that my 100 people I'm after have got to want to read it. They've, they've got to be interest for them in it. So I don't post about my dog, I don't post about my daughter, I post about um, what's of interest to them in their profession generally. Number two is I do not blind share stuff. I add an insight. So, I'd, so if I found a great article about yeah, Facebook in 2028, I'd say, yep, this is, uh, look, um, I'd probably say something like an amazing article about the future of Facebook. Um, I really, uh, I really appreciated points three, four, five, and six. Um, but I think I do not think robots or chatbots will be the future of communications. People are going to want to talk to people. That's the essence of communication. You know, that might be a really nice update um, because you want to add your expertise or insight to it. Um, you do not want to just blind share someone else's. It's just you haven't added any value to that. Um, is what I'd suggest. Um, number three is don't share competitor stuff or um, groups where you've got a bad mention, so make sure you read the article. Um, and number four is just around that there's a lot of pretty inflammatory information out in the web and pretty offensive and what I always recommend is just make sure it is Disney-like. And what I mean by that is no matter what Disney production it is, doesn't matter if you're a two-year-old kid or a 52-year-old man, you're not going to get offended by a Disney production. If anything, you're probably going to smile a bit and quite like it. So um, if you feel it's going to offend your mum, your boss, your colleagues, um, your competitors, probably just don't post it. Um, so it's just a good way to think about which content you should use. Um, there's specific industries, that's not always the case, but yeah, so that's what I'd be looking for. Um, and in terms of that actual status update. So Aidan, if you're comfortable, we might actually, do you want to just grab a link to an article um, and we'll post a status update. We'll just, we'll just do one on my LinkedIn. Um, so if you just put a test post up, let's just find an article, just um, search Facebook marketing um, and we'll find something great. Um, and what I was going to say with the status update is just make sure you think of your prospects first. Not, it, it does not matter that you launched a website or you launched a product or you've got an event on. Think about their problem. So think about, um, you know, that they want to have their next event and they really want to blow people away. So you found a great article about holograms um, for an event, for example. So um, that's what I'd be thinking about. Yep, so let, let's grab that link. So Aidan's found a great article about Facebook marketing from Kissmetrics. So he's copied that link. And what we're going to do is paste it in here. Yep. And so, um, and so what we'd do, so we'd found a great article, so Facebook marketing, a comprehensive guide for beginners. And so um, this is how you post a status update. So um, I'd generally put the link in first and you can delete the link now because uh, it will just populate that article is now there. You don't have to have the big messy link in there. Um, and this is where I would think about my 100, my 100 prospects. And I might write something like, um, if you haven't used Facebook ads um, for your organisation as yet, um, these are the three features I like the best, which are Facebook events, Facebook local and Facebook visits. Because um, I work with a lot of government and so most of them don't use Facebook right now. So that might be quite a relevant post for me. So yeah, so that's all there is to it. Yeah. And do you want to just show the tags as well? So, so let's just, um, why don't we tag, um, uh, let's tag CIT, so. That's just the same as Facebook. Um, I think, yeah, it's just down, down the bottom, mate. Um, so yes, you're correct. So I don't know if you all know, LinkedIn hasn't had this forever. Um, it's only been around for maybe 10 months or something where it's just like Facebook, which was the comment, yeah. So if you just type in um, Canberra Space Institute, 
Um, so you have to get the name correct, and it's just the last one there. And so, um, so yeah, so and that'll show up in a blue box. So hopefully you can see it at the back there as well. Um, and so you can mention actually individuals. So if you um, if you actually um, mention someone in there. So if you mention Peter Ring, for example. So I might write an update about Facebook ads. One of the best guys in Canberra is Peter Ring. Um, you know, CIT had a great session on LinkedIn. Facebook could be next. You know that we might do an update like that. So, yeah. People can post articles, but organisations can't? This is correct, yeah. Yeah, this is an excellent point. Um, can I ask who's got a LinkedIn company page? So that's what you're asking, yeah. LinkedIn, um, nice. Yeah, I've got, I've got both, but, but at the moment everything's on my personal page. Nice. So look, I'm just going to be really blunt here, um, and I've spent a heap of time on company pages. They're massively rubbish on LinkedIn. Um, so you can't, um, yeah, you, you can't publish articles, you can't tag individuals, you can't connect with individuals. Um, and so LinkedIn has really struggled with these. It's definitely worth having a company page if you're in an organisation or in a business, you must have one, they're good to have. Um, but you'll get about a thousand percent better results from using your personal profile because LinkedIn's really pushed on the fact that it's about that person-to-person -person interaction. Like I can't actually have a relationship with, um, with CIT. I can have a relationship with Joy Terry from CIT. And that's what LinkedIn's found. The one kind of thing about a company page is you can only advertise, like doing paid ads with a company page. If I said to you, it costs a dollar per click to advertise on Facebook, does anyone know how much it costs per click to advertise on LinkedIn on average? So Facebook as a benchmark is about a dollar per click. Does anyone want to have a stab? No, I think they, well, it's about $3 per, to boost your post, about 300 people or something like that. Yep. Yeah, so it ends up, on average, it's about $5 per click on LinkedIn. So it's the most expensive mm -hmm. per click advertising right now. So you want to have a pretty good reason to be doing it is my view. So um, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there. Uh, Can I just ask yeah. on that note though, so I've discovered that like, so I post for the company page, Yeah. but what I'd like to do because yeah, we, I can only, I've crafted lots of things to post there, off articles and whatever within the structure, but how do I use my profile to post back to the company page? I haven't. I know that might sound like a really dumb question, no, I should no, have figured no, it out to you. No, but no. so I can put an article on my page, but it goes to the company. Uh, yeah, there's actually not a good way to do it. Like LinkedIn's really busted in that way, I think. Like it's, so what, what I would think about doing, so I would have a company page and keep putting your updates and things on there, but I can guarantee you'll get much better results doing it as Joy Terry. Um, so I would tag in Canberra Institute of Technology. Oh, so. That that is what I would, and then if you and confirmed, yep. And then if then as your company page, if you go and like that, um, that'll do the best. <laughs> yeah, we can have a look at that together. But yeah, so um, so let's jump back to the, so let's jump back to the slide pack, uh, Mr. Aiden. So um, let's um, jump into this. So look, I just wanted to close out this loop for you. So um, so we just. Um, had a look at some amazing topics for content, um, said, yep, if you're going to do a status update or an article, make sure you're adding an insight. Don't just blind share things. Um, so what we've done, so, so we're all going to become Gary for a moment. So Gary has um, gone away and he's done a beautiful job of his profile. So he's updated his seven areas of his profile and done a really good job. He can do more of the areas, that's fine, but those seven are really going to matter to him. Number two, he's gone out and he's searched on um, senior people in defence. So we went and found um, 600 people in defence that were director level. Um, and he's actually gone through it and thought, this is amazing. And he's chosen, because he's quite specific in his government contracting to defence, there's only 138 that were appropriate. So he went and researched them and he found 138 that he liked. Those 138, he then went through and asked all of them to connect. And he wrote them all a nice little note. 
He took 3.2 minutes to write, to research and write those notes for 138 people and personalised them, made them really nice. Exactly 100 of those, so it's about 67% is average, accepted those connection requests. If you just go, if you don't write a nice connection request, only about 20% will connect with you. Um, but Gary's put the work in and so he's got a hundred of his exact target market has connected with him. He's then thought back and thought, oh, I went to that course at CIT and he's like, oh, I really want to meet with that person but I'm not going to go out and ask them to catch up for a coffee. What he did instead is he set up Google Alerts around, what kind of consulting do you do, Gary, sorry? Secret, secret consulting. Project management, thank you. Um, so, so he's gone and set up a Google alert for project management and for six weeks, three times a week, he's posted content on his LinkedIn profile and he's even done a couple of articles of um, projects he's been proud of or things he's put together. So he's got those hundred new people that are going to see this content over six weeks so six times three is 18 bits of content. So on average, they would have seen six bits of content from Gary. After six weeks, and I use that time frame very intentionally through sending tens of thousands of these, is about the optimal time where someone remembers you connecting, remembers those few bits of content. And then what Gary would do is he would, those hundred people he's got there, he would think about, um, going out to these individuals and proactively contacting them. And what he might write, so if we're all Gary, he might write, hi Jeff, um, th so through a message on LinkedIn, and he's also got their email address and phone number now, he might write, hi Jeff, I hope you're well, been connected on LinkedIn um, for a bit of time, so I thought I'd get in touch. Um, I read your interview in the latest Northrop Grumman Highlights magazine. Um, I loved your quote on organisational transformation. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, um, but I work for a, pro a consulting group that um, specialises in project management in Canberra. Um, our clients include Army, Australian Federal Police and the Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, I'm aware that you lead Capability at Defence, so I was wondering whether you'd be interested in meeting for a coffee on Tuesday or Wednesday in R1, which is their main defence building. Um, it'd be great to hear more about your plans for the rest of your year with your people, change and IT transformation. Regards, Gary, and he might put his number there. So a hundred people, I know the answer to this, but I would love to hear your thoughts. What happens? So he's done his profile, he's found the exact people he's after, he's connected with a hundred of them, he's shared the content, he's waited six weeks, and he's sent them a pretty fancy pants message. So he's taken a bit of time, about seven and a half minutes for each of these. What do you think happens? So a hundred people now have this message in their inbox. They all turn up at coffee at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best answer I've ever had. <laughs> they all turn up for coffee at the same time. I like that, thank you. <laughs> so, so 10 replies, so they all turn up for coffee. What are some other thoughts? What might happen? I would reckon all of them would reply. Okay, yep. So reply from all of them, yep. Depends if they're working with the government or not. <laughs> I think you'd probably, you'd, you'd probably have to get a reply from those who are, who are actually currently really involved in something and looking for, um, yeah, to, to make a connection. Um, I actually love this answer. Because, um, so I'll just repeat it, I'll paraphrase, is that um, the answer was those who are looking or those who are interested at the moment are probably the ones who reply. Um, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? So those who are interested at the moment or are looking would reply. Is that? It's pretty good, right? Because <laughs> if they're not looking for help, you probably don't necessarily need to hear from them. So um, <laughs> I like it. It's glorious. So, um, yeah. If they're like super polite and do answer 
or worst case, he gets fobs off to the most junior person in the Yeah. Yep, so he might get fobbed off. Um, so I'm going to give you the answer. So on average, this is what will happen. So if you reach out to 100 of your first degree connections, so with Gary, we had 100 people we went out to, on average, you'll get a 67% response rate. And because these are just people like you and me, you'll get every response. So people will say, thanks, but no thanks. They'll say, um, yes, I'd love to catch up for coffee, but is Thursday better? Um, you also get people saying, thanks for your message, this is really interesting, but my colleague Peter Smith is better to talk to about that. Here's his email address. They'll also say, um, I'm about to leave my job, I hate it, please don't tell my boss, but I'll be gone in four weeks, so probably not relevant. <laughs> because these are just people, right? They're just in their jobs, just one-to-one, -one, privately messaged. Um, and plus you've still got quite a, a factor of people who are, not, um, who are just not active, who might not check LinkedIn and that kind of thing. So 67% on average, you will get a response from, and on average, just over 35% will actually say, yes, um, thank you very much for your message. I'd love to catch up for coffee. Let's book a time, and they'll turn up. These people will know what you're about, know what you stand for, know what you specialize in, um, know what kind of person you might be because of the content you've been posting, and I can almost guarantee you'll have a very qualified conversation. They're not turning up to talk about the rugby. Well, they might mention it. It's been a bit tough recently, but um, they are there to talk about project management consulting in their department at Defence. Um, or they might be talking about potential roles in their team coming up in the next few months or whatever it might be. So you'd tailor this for your, your space, of course. So, um, so this is a, a great approach and a great way to use LinkedIn. And Look, I feel like I have great credibility to talk on this topic because I would argue I've made more mistakes than most people. So, um, and so through trying a lot of things and using LinkedIn in a lot of different ways, um, this is an extremely effective way to use um, LinkedIn and your personal brand to reach out to the exact humans you would like to talk to. Um, so I would love to say um, an enormous thank you for coming along tonight. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time, especially when it's cold, and investing in your future and in what comes next for you. Um, look, I'm really aware of right on time. I'm going to stick around for questions for as long as you need. Um, but look, a huge thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed tonight. Great. Thank you. Colin, you asked for a reminder about the premium. LinkedIn. Yes, premium. Can I ask who's got premium? Who, does anyone pay for LinkedIn? I'm contemplating. Yeah, nice. Um, look, look. I'll, I'll tell you my absolute views on it. Number one is just use the free one until it limits you, until it stops you doing what you want. Number two, the best subscription is the one that I use, I believe, is just called um, Business Executive. And what that does, so it costs, I think it's $72 a month, but you can pay just month on month, so you don't have to commit to 12 months. So I recommend you just do it for one month to start with. If you pay for it annual, I think it's 59 a month. It gives you a whole lot of stuff, but there's one thing that really matters in my view and the reason I pay for it is that instead of being able to, you can already talk to all your first degree connections, you're able to connect with your second degree connections, that's friend of a friend. When you pay for that one, you're able to see your third degree connections and connect with them. So you go from a reach of hundreds of thousands of people from second degree to if you pay that money, you can see millions of people and that is most of Australia. And so for someone in your position, I would absolutely invest in it, yeah. You also get a fancy badge that says premium and it lets people know that you're pretty serious, pretty active and pretty engaged. But the big reason is that you have access um, to a huge amount of more people, huge, huge amount more people. So, yeah, so, so I, like, um, yeah, I, I think it's very worthwhile. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Any other burning areas? Um, yes, yeah. Can you get the geographic filtered down a bit tighter than Canberra? Um, I love this question. So, the second best, so, um, and Microsoft bought LinkedIn about, yeah, about five months ago, and they actually turned it off. 
unless you pay. So if you get the premium subscription, you can actually go right down to postcode. So you can zoom in right on Nichols in Gangalan if you'd like to, or right on Manaka. Um, so you can zoom right into postcode is the lowest. Um, but if you pay for it, you can go Gangalan or Belconnen or Woden um, plus down to postcode. So, um, so for many businesses, that's extremely useful. So retail or residential. So yeah, so, but you do have to pay for it now. So yeah. Yeah, and I wonder then how, how, how do I find out? Is there a place where I can go and find all my posts? Absolutely. Do you, do you want to bring that up, Mr. Aiden? Just how to how to find all the posts? I'll just show you on the screen. So, this is when I went off on a tangent, didn't I? I said, does anyone have trouble navigating? Yeah, um, yeah. So, so let's just go to go to, go home. Um, so this is when you log into LinkedIn. This is where you'll hit down. Is is the home section? Um, yep, and so what you'd do is you'd go to your profile. Um, yeah, and then it's actually this box right here in the middle is your articles and activity. And so we can actually click on all, all my articles here. Or if you click on see all activity, um, yeah, and this, it, it's not brilliant, but, but this is where you get, you can see all activity, which is everything I've liked, commented, shared, Anything I've touched on LinkedIn is here. And I think it gives me 30 days worth of history, which is not that much, considering Facebook keeps your entire life. Um, number two is posts. So you click on that. And these are any status updates. So I was, um, oh, jeez. That's awesome. Look at that. Nice big CIT post. Um, yeah, so, yep, so that's my status updates and what I was talking about. Um, yeah, so if you click see more on that one, Aidan, so if you click on this post, so you might not be able to see. So I said, hidden up Camera Institute of Technology to run a LinkedIn session. Um, here's what we'll cover. I've secretly looked up all of their LinkedIn profiles. Is that stalking? Um, yeah, and that's got like 41 likes in the last couple of days. So um, people do tend to look like they. Um, yeah, and if you click on the last one, Aidan, um, so up, up the top. Yeah, so 4,234 people have seen that. So you can see it actually gives you the metrics on that. Um, and then articles, and so that was the article case study that I showed you um, tonight, so that's the most recent article I've done. And if you click actually on that article again, Aiden, um, and if you click on the little stat button, so there's a little button there, this actually tells you a lot of um, stalker information, so this is all free, not premium. And so I can actually see um, 28 clicks from Telstra is actually my highest, and so there's a very good chance that Telstra is probably interested um, uh, in what I'm doing at the moment. So I would probably call my contacts and Telstra and just catch up with them for a coffee. Um, so I can also see um, another couple of my clients, so Westpac and Combank, um, DXC, um, which is a consulting company. I can also see I've got relatively, so if I'm Danielle, I'm actually going after pretty senior people um, in organisations, which are the people who would, who would speak with Danielle. And so this is good news that CEOs, um, uh, CEOs are my main person looking at my things. Um, I can also see my biggest audience is from Sydney. I'm actually targeting Canberra, so that's not perfect. Um, yeah, and so, and how did people find it? So a lot of people did find it through Facebook by the looks of it. So 80 people came through Facebook, but the rest was through LinkedIn. So yeah, so you get quite a bit of data as well. It's quite interesting. So, yeah, and then every single, if you go back, Aiden, and click on the likes. Um, so if we click on this one and then click on uh, the 335, Yep. So I can actually, every single human that has liked that post, if I wanted to, um, and, and I, at, on occasions I would, if there's someone who's a pro, these are all my connections or people I'm interested in, I might send them a note and say, let's catch up for coffee. So yeah, because I know they're interested in that topic at the moment. So yeah, so, and you can see their exact profiles and all their information. So can you export yeah. that list of likes? You can't actually, yeah. It's um, no, it's very. You can very manually, <laughs> but you just by clicking on it and copying and pasting. But you can't export, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Is it yeah. Being, uh, following your actual friends, or do you think you can reach out to, to them through other channels if you actually know them? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So, um, look, this is a great question. So, this is about friends and family and people who are close to you. So, look, one of the, many of you, I had a look at your profiles, and some of you, are, you know, might have 23 connections, which is absolutely fine. I don't judge you. Um, but one of the first things you can do, 
Was that snarky? It was. <laughs> um, one of the first things you can do to, to grow your connections really quickly is I actually absolutely recommend connecting with your, what I call the inner circle, um, which and so just relevant people. So um, family, friends, colleagues, suppliers, clients, bosses, past bosses, past um, high school people, anyone who's just not relevant, like if they're just completely not in your zone, I wouldn't be a part of that, but it is a great way to build up to 200 connections, 300 connections pretty quickly. Um, and if any of your friends are like obnoxious or potentially will troll you or trying to have, you know, <laughs> you know, people do that, I'd probably dodge them on LinkedIn. That, that's cool for Facebook and stuff. But um, it's actually the people you already know, like on average right now, the average Australian knows about 2000 people through their life is, is the number. And generally people average about 2% of those people on their LinkedIn profile. So if you think about everyone you know, some people might know 10,000, some people might know 10, right? But um, all these people you know, so first thing I do with people when I work with executives, I say, get me all your business cards, give me your iPhone, give me your Outlook. Um, and I go through all their business cards, I go through their phone, like I don't care, I just get in there. Um, and I just find all the people they've ever emailed, ever contacted, ever SMSed. And I go through, because everybody's got generally very big networks they're not aware of. So it's actually a wicked place to start because they'll, they'll just accept straight away. Like, yeah. Look, let, let's wrap up for there. Look, any questions you've got, look, please feel free to stay around and, and help. Um, look, I'm really happy. I'll send the slides out to everybody who's come along tonight. My details are in there. Feel free to um, connect with me on LinkedIn or message me. If you want a hand, just let me know. Like, I, I really love this stuff. Um, it's, it's awesome fun. So get out there, be bold, try it, give it a go. Um, and and just, uh, just commit to it um, and start with an hour a week and it will change your life. It will really help. Yeah, thanks very much for coming, everybody. Thank you.